Hello and welcome to another episode of Autoga Fuel. Today with me AJ and Thomas B. You join me in sunny Croatia and this weekend I have the keys to the all new Škoda Scala. Škoda is always known for making cars that are a little bit more spacious and a little bit more practical than its VW Group counterparts. That was no different for the previous Rapid Space Pack. But since that was on the old platform, that car is going to be discontinued pretty soon. So enter the new MQB A0 based Škoda Scala. This car has more space than the VW Golf or even the Ford Focus. So should this be the next family car that you put your money on? I'm here today to find out. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. I know what you're thinking. AJ, wasn't there a Renault Scala? And you would be right. That car was sold in some markets and generally has been discontinued. Therefore, the Scala is now affiliated with the Škoda brand and they have the rights for the name. The Fabia recently had a facelift and will continue to be sold with the old platform, but the Rapid is now discontinued and the Scala now comes with the MQB A0 platform. It only comes with the hatch body style and there is no longer the sedan. Up front, well, this is actually quite a refreshing new take on the design language. It of course has the traditional Škoda uh, elements like the grille and the general signature of the front bumper, but it's a, more, it's a more vertical design right now. A lot more angular edges along the sides of the grille. The headlamps as well are really um, new and fresh. As standard you get base LED lights, but you can get the full LED lights, which have the high beam as well in LED and gets the cascading animated turn, uh, turn signal indicators in the rear lights. The signature looks quite different for the base and the full LED, so check that out and see which one you prefer. The front bumper is also a lot more aerodynamic, so for example there are uh, intakes at the side to channel air along the outside edges of the car to make it a little bit more streamlined. And overall, I think it's a very handsome looking front. The Scala is 4.36 meters long. That's actually 10 centimeters longer than the Golf. How is this possible? Well, even though this is based on the smaller MQB A0 platform, it's been stretched to the maximum permissible limit and therefore its wheelbase is more in line with the A1 platform. You can also optionally get the sports suspension package wherein the ride height is dropped by 15 millimeters and you get adaptive dampers. We'll see how that plays out and if it's really required and it, if it suits the personality of this car. The wheels, by the way, as standard, start at 16 inches. You can, you can optionally get them up to 18 inches like the ones you see here. But there's also some really nice um, aerodynamic designs and even with that, if, it's, if you get a 17 inch wheel, because of that kind of surface area that it provides, makes the wheels look a lot larger and you can still retain some more sidewall for a more comfortable ride. So make sure you check that out as well. The proportions of this car are really nice, very interesting, kind of similar to the Spaceback, the Rapid Spaceback that it replaces. Yes, it is a hatch, but it's fairly long and the sloping roof line uh, towards the rear of the hatch, it just amplifies the length of it and it almost seems like a quasi-combi or a semi-estate, even though it's just a hatch. I think overall a very handsome design with some very subtle but clean design lines as well. What do you guys think? At the back of the Scala, you will notice that there is a black uh, spoiler. This is also part of one of the packages, you can get this in the body color, but since we have the optional panoramic sunroof as well, you have this nice black contrasting roof that carries on into the spoiler. 
Kind of continuing with the design uh, that we see with the previous Rapid Space Pack, the Scala also has a glass, um, you know, the windscreen or the rear window going all the way down into the hatch and it's not just, you know, part of it. So I think this design is really nice. Furthermore, these big stamped letters for the Škoda branding is also something that's fairly new and that we don't see that often. The tail lights are also full LED with animated cascading turn indicator lights, which is also a first. The uh, Škoda, the crystal structure that we see generally across all the range is also present. So overall, a very nice three-dimensional look, very sleek uh, rear end of the car. Going further down, rear view camera, parking sensors, and these are not really exhaust tips at all. So it's not really being fake. It's just a design and the actual exhaust is tucked away underneath. So the Scala is, to me, kind of like a baby Octavia for somebody who doesn't want something as large as the Octavia, but something that is still more practical than the Golf and for a bargain. Seems to be pretty good, at least on paper so far. Let's take a look at the key fob. It's very similar to the rest of the VW group. This is the style trim and in the rally green color. It has keyless entry. So if I go up to it, it will unlock and then the door opens. Simply clever features that we know and love about Skoda, like the um, umbrella in the door pocket. Sorry, in the side of the door. You don't need a Rolls Royce for that. <laughs> The door itself is quite black in this uh, color scheme, but they have put in some good materials. This nice plush, very textured uh, material at the top. This is hard, but you know this is also quite textured. And where you really matters, you know, where where you put your elbow when you sit down. This is all quite soft and plush. Very large door pocket. As we look inside, let's take a look at the seat. So there are different options for the seats. You can even get in the dynamic package sports seats with integrated head restraints. In this version, we have manually adjusting seats for height, as you can see, for lumbar support and the reclining, but you can get automatic seats for that as well. There are options like the one we see here with microfiber and real animal leather, uh, but we always prefer the more simple classic fabric seats, which are a little bit more friendlier to animals and also you can save some money as well. A lot of different options for the interior, um, uh, the color scheme. This is fairly black on the inside, but there's a lot of new stuff that I want to talk about. So let's hop inside and take a closer look. All right, so a lot of exciting things to talk about inside the new Scala. First, let's just talk, take a quick look at the materials. As you can see, they are very plush and soft on the top. That textured element that we saw on the door is also here. I really like the way this feels. It feels a little bit more premium which is nice, so that material continues over here. An interesting colored element along the, uh, the inside of the dash. A damped glove box as well, which is cooled, so very useful. But what's really nice is the infotainment screen as well as the digital cockpit. So let's start with the, the virtual cockpit and let's move our way over from there. And so you have multiple different views. As you can see, you can have the entire navigation map on the full screen. By the way, this is the first VW MQB A0 platform car to have the updated new generation of the infotainment systems, wherein you can actually now have the map on the virtual cockpit, as well as on the main infotainment display, which even the T-Rock doesn't have 
forget the T-Cross or the Polo. So that's really nice to see that Škoda is now, even though they're the last to come to the MQB A0 platform, they, that brings with it the flip side where they have the latest technology that they can integrate directly. So apart from the map, you can of course have different kinds of views that you can uh, have, including like a sport view with a large tachometer in the middle with the speedo speedometer reading inside the middle. You can see here that we've been averaging about 6.1 liters for 100 kilometers. So we'll talk more about that once we're driving. You have a lot of different assistance systems that you can activate. Again, now because this is now on the MQB A0 platform, you have things like lane keeping assist with intervention, side assist, rear traffic alert, front assist with emergency braking, and so on. The steering wheel has a lot of different buttons to control the infotainment system and the virtual cockpit. The adaptive cruise control stock is on the left hand side. In fact, with the dynamic package, you would get also a more sportier steering wheel, but I think this one is good enough anyway. Now let's spend some time talking about the new infotainment system. So you have three different options, a six inch display, an eight inch display, and this top of the range 9.2 inch um, touchscreen system. They're all touch, they all have connectivity for Android, Apple and, uh, sorry, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but this largest version does not have any physical buttons. So the other two still have knobs for the volume and the zoom, which I honestly prefer. But like I mentioned, with this top-end version, you can have the navigation on both screens. It's a lot more slick, it's a lot more modern. It, uh, because it's connected now with its own SIM card, you can have updates on the news and uh, weather and a lot of different apps like, you know, to find points of interest. You could even say, hey Škoda, I'm, I'm feeling hungry, I want a pizza. Then it will look for the nearest pizza parlor and automatically navigate you to that. Um, there's a lot of different settings that you can uh, you can uh, manipulate and you know a lot of assistance systems as well like we mentioned and you can also change the way the virtual cockpit is viewed you can have different kinds of uh, presets that you want to see over there apart from that down here you have a dual zone climate control with knobs and um, you know two zones which is always nice an inductive wireless phone charging port over here, as you can see, with also kind of like these, uh, this rubber mat and a frame, these indentations so your phone fits in and doesn't slide around as you're going around twisty roads. A couple USB chargers, although these are the new USB-C type chargers, which is a bold <laughs> statement that Skoda is making that, hey, we are modern and fresh and they don't even offer the regular old uh, USB uh, charging slots. This is the six-speed manual. Of course, you also have the option for the seven-speed DSG. Drive mode selectors, which uh, if you look up here, Thomas, you can see that there's the eco, normal, sport, and individual. So here we can see the things that we can change. You can change the steering setup to be light or heavier, which is what they would say is the, um, the sport or the um, normal mode. The Sport Select chassis, now this is something we can, I will talk about when I'm driving, but this car comes equipped with the optional Sport Select chassis, which means that it's 15 millimeters lower than the standard car, and it has an adaptive damper, which you can turn on in the Sport mode, where it will be stiffer, or if you can turn it off in the Normal mode, where it will be a little bit more plush. And honestly, I'm not so sure this is a good idea, and I'll tell you why once I'm driving. The drive means basically how the the engine reacts to throttle inputs if you want it, if you want it to be more reactive and urgent or if you want it to be more um, you know muted and in that way be a little bit more economical you can set these different things up and back down here you can see that we also have with the MQB A0 the park assist so with this the car can actually park itself into a parallel parking scenario or a perpendicular parking scenario you still have to manipulate the throttle and the clutch and the brake but the car will detect a size, a slot which is big enough for it and automatically steer it in place, which is again, something that we see on all MQB A0 cars. It's also good to see Isofix points for child seats in the front passenger seat, a central armrest which can slide forward and backward, but however, it does not have that ratchet to be fixed in place if you lift it up. So there's only one position vertically that this sits. Cost saving has to be done somewhere. <laughs> Let's give it the shake test. Yeah, but it's, it's really solid. A nice cubby hole down there. A 12 volt 
power socket, as you can see. More simply clever features like inside here with the indentations in the bottle holder. So for a bottle of this kind of design, it will fix automatically and you can open the bottle and close the bottle with one hand. And finally, up top, a large panoramic glass roof, which does not open unfortunately, but is really expansive and in this way, it lets in a lot of light. All right, let's take a look in the back seat. This is a very important space for any Skoda owner to be aware of, so let's test it out. Getting inside is actually fairly easy. This car is a little bit bigger and upright, which means that there's a lot more space to get inside. The door opens also fairly wide, so it's easy to fit in child seats. There's Isofix points on the outside two seats, which have this kind of a pop-out cover but at least they're very easy to identify. The door also has soft materials for my elbows, so it's, it's very comfortable. Now let's talk about space. <laughs> Boy, there's amples of it. I mean, really, this is, this is an MQB A0 car, but it takes that to another level. There's so much of knee room. I have so much space to slide my feet under the front seat, even though this is set to the lowest position and set to my driving position. I'm about five foot eight or 1.7 meters. Door pockets on the side, even door pockets over here, not just on the back. So to keep, maybe you can slip your phone in here, very easy. Rear air conditioning vents, although this is only still a dual zone. So this is just a vent. You cannot change the temperature. Type C USB charging ports over here. Let's take a look in the middle seat. Well, the bench is a little bit more firm in the middle. As you can see, it's, it's contoured really, uh, you know, kind of more in lines for a two seater in the back, but it is fairly comfortable. You know, the backrest is a little bit firm as well because of that uh, armrest inside with the cup holders. So that plastic makes it a little bit more hard, but I have space to keep my feet. I can share it with my co-passengers. There is a very tall central transmission tunnel, I'll be honest. It is very tall and there's no way you can fit a foot anywhere near this. But because it's quite narrow, there is enough space as it tapers away. Speaking of that central armrest, it pops in with a nice little click in place with two cup holders. So if you have only four people, they will be in complete luxury. Also, this panoramic sunroof starts opening from the back, not from the front. So there's a lot more space here. There's that, that roller is not here, it's in the front. And if the driver does not want to have the sunroof uh, opened, he can just open a little bit in the rear. And in that way, the backseat passengers can have that open air feeling while it's still covered in the front. They have been very clever with this. And I must say, the space is just really phenomenal. Let's take a look under the hood. Also reminds me of the Hulk. This is, I'm gonna call this the Hulk green <laughs> instead of the rally green. Um, all right, so what powers the Skoda Scala? As with the VW Group portfolio, we have the same VW portfolio engines. That means there is a one liter TSI, which is the three cylinder turbo petrol engine. Something we're quite familiar with. We see it all across the VW Group. This engine can either make 95 horsepower or 115 horsepower, like the one we have here. So this uh, comes with either a six-speed manual or a seven-speed DSG. The 95 horsepower tune of this engine only comes with a five-speed manual. If you want something a little bit more powerful than this, then there is the 1.5 e Evo TSI, which is a four-cylinder turbo petrol engine, which makes 150 horsepower, 150 horsepower. That also comes with either a six-speed manual or a seven-speed DSG. If you want a diesel, there is the 1.6 TDI turbo four uh, cylinder diesel engine, which makes 115 horsepower, again with six-speed manual or seven-speed DSG. And there will also be a bivalent CNG engine in the future. Let's take a look in the trunk. So this car also comes with the automatic tailgate, which is a really handy feature to have. So this is the biggest talking point for the Scala, the trunk. It's 467 liters of boot space, which is actually bigger than the Ford Focus. I think it's about 120 liters bigger than that. You get the rubber mat, which is easy to hose down when it gets dirty. There's also a spare wheel with the jack kit. 
over there. You can optionally get the uh, movable floor so you can raise that and have it flush uh, with the seats when they're folded down as well because otherwise there's a little bit of a lip and I'll show you in a minute if you put the seats down they don't lie completely flat but apart from that you have some cubby holes on either side a 12 volt power socket some hooks to hang grocery bags and if we take the parcel shelf out like so then you have access to the switches to tumble the seats forward like that in a 60-40 fashion and now you have 1410 liters of boot space which is even bigger than the Golfs. You can also optionally get the fully tumbling front passenger seat but then that will also lie flat and with the false floor you will get one large long flat loading area and then you can really haul all those cupboards from Ikea with no problem at all. All right, so let's start off the driving segment with the new Škoda Scala. We're going to start off with a little bit of driving around in the city, or rather these small towns and villages, as we just drive along down the coastline, and then we'll make our way up into the mountains and test um, how it behaves there. So this will give us an overall good understanding of how the Scala behaves in you know small city type situations out on the open road, and also on twisty serpentine roads and how it behaves over there. So I'm gonna keep this in normal mode for the time being. There's also the eco mode, there's also the sport mode, and you can set up all of the different characteristics uh, the way you want with the individual mode. In the normal mode, the steering is fairly lightweight. The truth is, it is actually very light, um, which is great and easy to drive when you are in the city, but it doesn't really give you much feedback and we'll see how that behaves in sport mode on the mountain roads where you do want it to give you feedback and want it to be a little bit more um, you know, heavier. But in this situation, actually, I would welcome this kind of a light steering. It's very easy to make quick corrections. Um, the next thing in the normal mode would be the, uh, the damping in the suspension. Now this is an option, you can get the Sport Select package wherein the ride height, the suspension, is dropped by 15 millimeters. So it is, you're going to lose a little bit of that ground clearance. But on the other hand, it's a little bit more planted already. But you can even turn on the Sport mode and uh, the, the damping will be activated and will make the suspension a lot more stiff. And in that way, you know, that firm suspension always helps out when you're going on twisty roads. But the truth is, if I were to go to a sport mode right now, I can already tell you that it feels a little bit jiggly on these kind of bumpy city streets. So it doesn't make so much of a, it doesn't make much sense to use the sport mode or at least have the, the suspension in the stiffer setting on these uh, bumpy streets because it does actually become a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know if you can see in the camera, we have pretty good stabilization, but it does, does kind of you know, bounce around quite a lot more. So I'm gonna leave it in normal since anyway we are in the uh, in the town right now um, this car is riding on 17 inch wheels the one I showed you from outside was on 18 inch wheels but I think 17 inches is the right size for this car you can even get those kind of uh, you know aerodynamic designs and that way it does kind of kind of evoke that it looks or it seems like a hybrid or an electric or not a electric but at least a hybrid because it's so aerodynamic but the plus side is it makes the wheels look a lot bigger because they're so chunky and um, have so much of surface area but you don't have to get such a big size for it to look that way so you don't need to go up to the 18 inches you can save a little bit of money and because of that extra sidewall that rubber you get does make the ride a lot more uh, compliant and cushy the uh, the sound insulation is also really good. There's an acoustic package as well that you can get and it's a very hushed cabin when you're just going at you know regular seed, uh, speeds in the city um, and on the motorway this three-cylinder turbo petrol engine the 1.0 TSI uh, the one I have is the 115 horsepower version is very quiet you can barely hear it so it's very relaxing 
The nice panoramic glass roof also gives you so much of light inside. The headliner in this car is also beige and I really appreciate this kind of a lighter color. It makes it seem a lot more spacious and airy and just a lot more pleasant to be in. It doesn't feel dark and hemmed in. So that way, I think this combination is really good. Škoda being Škoda is very spacious and that also is uh, thanks in part to the tall windows, the large windscreen, large rear window. So really good visibility overall. You also have parking sensors and a rear view camera. So in city spaces like this, if you're trying to navigate and make three point turns, there's plenty of visibility and plenty of assistance in terms of parking. Because it's on the MQB A0, it also has the park assist, which will actually uh, steer the car when you want to go into a parking spot. So now I'm getting out of the city limits. Let's drop it down a gear and go a little bit faster. Now it feels a lot more lively. The, this 1.5, so 1 liter, uh, 115 horsepower TSI is an engine that I'm very familiar with. Um, above 3000 RPM is where it really becomes very lively. It's a lot more responsive. Turbo lag is very well contained. You don't really feel it too much. It is there, of course, but in the city, it's, it's not a problem. There's always plenty of torque for you to get moving. The clutch is also really lightweight and very easy to use. The gearbox, well, this is an MQB A0. And while it's a fairly short throw, you know, it's not a very, it's not a short throw itself. It's, it's, it's kind of like a medium throw, I would say, but it, it doesn't feel as crisp. It's not that bad. It is pretty tight, but it's a little bit, uh, I wish it was a little bit more crisp, but this is one of my standard complaints with the MQB A0 platform. Um, very recently, a couple weeks ago, I drove the T-Cross and even there I, I mentioned that I wish it was a little bit more crisp. But the truth is, for the demographic, for the market that this car is targeting, things like that doesn't really matter at all. So instead of spending money on that, they've spent money on the things that the people who would buy this car really care about, like space. Then, uh, yeah, the, so the above 3000 RPM is where this one, point, where this one liter TSI really comes to life. It becomes a lot more vocal and sonorous as well. You can hear it inside the cabin. Being a three cylinder, it gives you a nice burble, that three cylinder thrum, which actually is quite enjoyable and quite fun. Um, apart from that, the seats. Well, this, these are the standard seats. You can also get the optional sports seats, which would have integrated head restraints. I think these seats are actually quite, quite comfortable. You can also get them in full fabric. You don't have to get the leather and microfiber combination. And I would also recommend you go for the fabric. It is a little bit on the firmer side. That's just my perception, my taste. That means that, of course, it's a lot more supportive on longer drives. And if you really keep the you know, seat back more upright and lean all the way back, put your hip into the bottom, then it's, a, it, it's supporting you really well. It also has lumbar adjustment. So it is a very supportive seat. It's just a matter of your personal taste. If you like something a little bit softer, then this is probably, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't seem that comfortable right off the bat, but it's something you can get used to um, after a while. I've also been driving this car for some time and yeah, initially it did feel a little bit stiff and I did feel myself fidgeting around a little bit, but after a while I got used to it very easily. Then, the brakes are also really powerful. Uh, they are also fairly progressive. So it gives you really good confidence when you want to make a sudden uh, emergency brake. There's also the emergency braking assist. So it's really uh, confidence inspiring. A lot of assistance systems, including a, um, a much more upgraded advanced um, blind spot monitoring, which works, I think, up to 17 meters. So it really is, has a long range detection. And the, the warning light is not in the mirror itself. It's actually just on the edge of the, um, the, uh, the, you know, the, the wing mirror itself. So it's not on the mirror, but it's on the casing rather. There we go, <laughs> that's the word. So it's not kind of, um, gives you a good notification, but it's not taking up real estate on the mirror itself. There's adaptive cruise control, which let's try out right now. I'm gonna set it to 50 kilometers per hour and you can set the distance you want it to maintain with the car in front. This also has active lane keeping assist. So on the highway, not in country roads like this, there will be a symbol which activates and shows you that the steering intervention is now active and working. 
and it will actually steer you if you're going out of um, out of the lane and keep you in the middle of the lane which is always safe on long drives if you're with your family you get distracted a little bit um, there's always a safety cushion for you to rely on and just fall back on so it is level 2 semi-autonomous and it should just be an assistance it's not taking over the driver's job so you should also be aware that you can't leave this on and forget about it and take your hands off the wheel it still requires you to keep your hands on the wheel and be attentive Now I am in the mountains. I've been driving here for a little while. So let's talk about how the Skoda Scala behaves if you want it to be a little bit more rowdy and a little bit more sporty. By the way, before I start with that, um, when we were cruising down the coastline at just 50 kilometers per hour, I had the car in fourth gear. I had it uh, with the uh, adaptive cruise control on and it was giving me 4.9 liters for 100 kilometers, which is really great. So you don't have to feel guilty about this engine. Uh, if, even if you do want to thrash it, it is still very frugal. And if you drive it with a very light foot and you shift up a lot sooner, then it really gives you very good mileage. It's also, as you saw in that tunnel, compact enough for you to fit it into narrow spaces, but at the same time, it's still uh, spacious enough for you to be carrying all the things you want to carry for your active lifestyle. So let's put it into sport mode and let's see what it can do. So now several things have changed in the car setup. First of all, the throttle response, so the mapping with how sharp the throttle, um, my inputs of my, uh, on my, with my right foot affects the, the throttle in the engine has changed, so it's a lot more crisp. There is, of course, a little bit of turbo lag, as with this engine, at very low down in the RPM. But if you keep it over 2,500 RPM, it's really torquey. And above 3,000 RPM is where it really comes to life. And then it really revs a lot more freely and a lot more quickly from 3,000 RPM onwards. On these rougher surfaces, now with the sport suspension uh, in the sport mode, it does feel a bit jittery and a bit jiggly. So let's get out onto the open road, put it through its paces. See, it revs really freely. Sounds nice, this three cylinder 1.0 TSI, as I've said before, has a nice burble as it goes up to 6,000 RPM. And it makes a nice buzzing sound and a burbling sound, very enjoyable. It does feel a lot more composed, albeit still a bit, you know, a little bit bumpy with the stiffer suspension. We're coming to a hairpin. Brakes are also really good. Very progressive, strong bite. Kick down. Turn in is pretty good. See now, you know, around hairpins like this, that uh, stiffer suspension really does help out. Yes, it does lower the car by 15 millimeters. So on normal surfaces, or if you're on some rough roads, you're losing that bit of ground clearance, which you know you might prefer to have. But if you know if you want to be able to drive with a little bit more of gusto, I think having a little bit of a lower suspension and having the ability to switch on this active damping is a good option. I wouldn't say it's for everybody, but uh, I like that it's there. Moving on to the next thing, let's talk about the steering. Now the steering is a bit of a mixed bag from my, uh, my perspective. First of all, it's still too light. It is much too light for me to feel that it's really engaging. The steering rack is not necessarily slow, but it's not fast either. Especially from dead center, there's quite a lot of, you know, vagueness right at the center, which doesn't give me the most confidence and is not really engaging. I'm a sports car enthusiast, I love sports cars, I love hatchbacks, uh, hot hatches, and for me steering feel is one of the most important factors. It doesn't matter how fast you can go or how powerful the engine is, the steering is one of the most important um, factors to enjoy the drive and I think the Scala honestly just misses out, just misses out on that. There's no other way to say it unfortunately. But the truth is, you know, this is not trying to appeal 
to every sports car enthusiast. No, this is trying to appeal to the more practical minded person who has a family, who needs the space, doesn't want to spend that much money on a Golf or a Leon or an A3 and still wants to have, you know, a compact car, which is practical. And if you get the Sports Select package, it gives a little bit more composure. So I get it. But honestly, now that the steering really shows me that it's not connecting enough, I don't think just having the suspension is completely changing this from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde. No, it's still very much Dr. Jekyll. It's still very much a Skoda. And in that way, it's not the, 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 the stiffer suspension is not, uh, is not vital enough for me to say that, okay, it's, it's worth it. Um, I think it's okay to maybe stick to the normal suspension, I would say. It's a lot more compliant and plush. You might get a little bit more body roll when you're driving quickly, but because with the sport mode, with the sport uh, suspension, the steering is still letting it down. So the overall package isn't sporty enough anyway. So I would recommend you can probably skip out on that. So even if you do drive with a heavy foot, I'm getting 7.8 liters for 100 kilometers, which is still very much reasonable in terms of the consumption. So you don't really have to feel guilty about, you know, driving this car quickly or, uh, um, you know, fast. And it's still very much frugal. The engine does sound a lot more louder when you rev it up, but uh, the wind noise and the tire noise is still very much contained and very much damped. So it's still quite comfortable. And I think that's the overarching, uh, overarching theme of this car is comfort, ease of use, and practicality. I know those are three things, but sporty, I wouldn't say, not really. This, uh, the gearbox is also something I usually complain about with the MQB A0, because I say it's a bit of a long throw, it's a bit vague. And that also holds true for the Scala, I think. It's uh, not as long of a throw as the T-Cross, in my opinion. I drove that a couple weeks ago. So it is a little bit crisper, but it's certainly not a rifle bolt action kind of a play or a feel. It is still a bit spongy, but the pedals are really easy to use. The clutch is lightweight, great for driving in the city, but also great to shift up really quickly or shift down with a blip of the throttle and yeah if the steering was a little bit better honestly I wouldn't have much to complain about this car it's gonna back up a little bit in this narrow tunnel oh thank you <laughs> very kind people here in Croatia so a shout out to our Croatian viewers The three, sorry, this three-cylinder um, 1.0 TSI does lurch a little bit um, at at 2,000 RPM when the turbo really kicks in and it's a big shove. It does kind of lurch if you're on uh, full throttle, if you have the, your foot down. Something to be aware of. But you see the steering rack here, you know, for these hairpins, um, there is quite of steering that I'm having to do. But I think, you know, for the target market, it is sporty enough, just not my taste, but that's just a subjective perception. And overall, I think um, if you do want to have a little bit of fun and you're okay with sacrificing a little bit of ground clearance, go ahead, get that sport suspension and enjoy the drive. But if you are a keen driver, such as myself, who really enjoys the sports car and steering is very important for you, then I would say skip out on that suspension because it's not doing enough to completely change the personality of the Scala from being a practical car to a hot hatch. So I don't think it makes sense to get it anyway. So that's my two cents on that. But on the whole, yeah, it's pretty good.
We wanted to be thorough, as we always are here in Ultra Gear Fuel. So now I have with me the 1.5 Evo TSI four-cylinder turbo petrol engine um, with the, the Ambition trim line, so the mid-spec trim, um, with the seven-speed DSG. So this will give us a little bit of a comparison between the one-liter TSI and the style trim with the six-speed manual transmission that we drove earlier on. And also now I'm on the highway, so we can also test some of the highway mannerisms um, of the new Scala. So, being the Ambition trim line, we're also having the full fabric seats. And actually, I really prefer these seats. They feel a little bit more softer. Um, you can still, of course, get the dynamic package, which would then give you the uh, sports seats with the integrated headrests. But I think these seats are also fairly comfortable. Speaking of comfort, I'm also, uh, these, this car is also on 17 inch wheels, not 18 inches. And I think this is the right size for this car. Again, being the overall personality of this car, you know, being comfort and uh, ease of use oriented, I think 17 inches is good enough. They still look really proportional to the size of the, the wheel arches. They fill that gap in really nicely. And I don't think you need a bigger 18 inch wheel anyway. So very plush, comfortable ride. This also does have that sports adaptive uh, damping package. On the highway, it's not that bad. Um, of course, in the normal mode, it's supposed to be softer, but you know, in the city, I would still recommend if comfort is your orientation, don't bother with this uh, suspension package at all. Just keep it simple, save the money, retain that ground clearance and a more plush ride. I have the cruise control set. This is the standard MQB80 adaptive cruise control um, with the emergency braking um, and also the steering intervention. So it works fairly well. It's predictable. So like right now, you know, I'm, I'm going around a right hand bend. You see that the steering wheel is automatically adjusting for me and keeping me in lane. This car also, this engine rather, is also fairly economical. So it's a very complicated engine. It's very sophisticated. It has things like, in coupled with the seven speed DSG, it can coast. So it can decouple the engine and the transmission and just use the momentum of the car to go downhill. It can also deactivate two of the four cylinders and run as a two cylinder engine to save fuel when it just has to kind of tick over and keep nudging the car to maintain speed. It also has variable compression ratios, a variable geometry turbo. So it's a really smart engine and it's giving me on the highway right now, I reset the trip meter um, just um, about uh, 10 kilometers ago. And since I'm just driving on the highway, pure highway driving, it's giving me 6.9 liters for 100 kilometers, which is pretty good. Of course, maybe not as frugal as the one liter TSI, uh, but at higher speeds, you know, that one liter TSI, it's going to have to work a little bit harder than this 1.5. You know, as they always say, there is no replacement for displacement. So that holds true. You know, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit less stressed at higher speeds, this 1.5 TSI. So if you do plan to do a lot of long drives um, with your full family, or if you're a traveling salesman of sorts, you're always having to carry heavy, heavy bulky items in the, in the trunk and you're gonna be doing long distances, maybe the 1.5 is a little bit more um, better for you. It is a little bit more mature. The, the personality of the car also changes a little bit. The three cylinder after 3000 RPM would become a lot more vocal as we saw and a little bit more buzzy and a little bit more lively. That's fun, but this car is always composed very sophisticated, a little bit more mature. So being a four cylinder inherently in that, it's a little, it sounds a lot different and it doesn't buzz as much. So again, I think it's a little bit of a trade off here and there. This also has the acoustic damping package. So it's really quiet, very minimal wind noise, very minimal road noise. I think road noise is actually completely, you know, at a zero, I can barely hear the tires or the road, a little bit of wind, but that, that sloping roof line at the rear, and just generally a very aerodynamic um, silhouette of this car with that slippery front bumper and so on. It really cuts through the air nicely. In fact, it has a coefficient, uh, coefficient of drag of just 0.29, which means that, yeah, so it is very quiet. It's not just the efficiency. We will try to get on some winding roads and I wanna test this engine out and the seven speed DSG in sport mode, see how the paddle shifters are, and you know, see how this engine and the extra horsepower that it has maybe makes this car feel a lot more sporty. Yes, it is still the MQB A0, so only 
transverse mounted engines, only front wheel drive, no option for all wheel drive, and of course, still only a torsion beam suspension at the rear, but does extra horsepower make this a lot better? Let's find out. All right, now let us put this 1.5 through its paces. And to do that, I'm gonna switch over to sport mode. Now, since this has the seven speed DSG, apart from the engine throttle response, the steering weight, the chassis damping, uh, the suspension damping, another thing that changes is now how late or how quickly the seven speed DSG shifts. And you can, as you can see, it holds the same gear for a longer period of time so that I have all that nice torquey power band right in the middle of the rev range to utilize and to use that to push the car harder and faster. Wow, I must say already this 1.5 makes this car a lot, lot more faster than the one liter did. That is definitely, um, you know, something you notice immediately. So if, if you feel that you are going to be enjoying a quick drive every now and then, and you're okay with, you can forgive the steering, um, then the truth is this 1.5 might just be the answer for you. It does feel a lot faster and because it's a four cylinder and it's, it's, it's you know, a lot more sophisticated, it, it feels a lot more composed. You know, the whole car doesn't have that vibration or that buzz that you get when you're driving the one liter TSI um, at higher speeds. And with the seven speed DSG, of course, you can put it into manual mode and then you can use the paddle shifters like that to shift. And being the DC, uh, the DSG that we know, it's immediate and it's a very precise shift. But keep it in auto and the sport mode will ensure that it's also a very active um, uh, transmission and it's also very quick to respond to your throttle inputs. Steering weight gets heavier as expected. The ride also is now a lot more firm as expected, the same. And it does feel a little bit unsettled or jittery over rougher surfaces. But the truth is this 1.5 TSI really pushes this car to a you know it's really quick and i think if you were if you really want to um you know enjoy driving this car quickly the 1.5 tsi is the engine to get the one liter tsi somehow it's probably going to be the you know uh, it's going to it's going to be the best for most people it's going to do everything that you would require for most people but it is still fairly economical on the highway as we saw i was getting in the end i was getting about 5.7 liters for 100 kilometers which is a great uh, figure now it's still saying 6.2, even, even though I'm driving a little bit more quickly. So, yeah, stiffer suspension is definitely helpful. The uh, extra horsepower is also definitely helpful. The 7-speed DSG also allows you to utilize that power uh, from the 150, um, this 1.5, a little bit better because you're not having to worry about the shifting and it's doing a great job on its own anyway. And therefore, you can really just enjoy the drive, if only the steering was a little bit better. Let's summarize today's episode of the all-new Škoda Scala. The prices started around 22,000 euros, but if you get the top style trim and start adding a lot of options, then it can easily cross 30,000 euros. And that's where the trademark Škoda price value benefit starts to disappear. So you gotta be really careful with that configurator. So what's my overall takeaway from this car? Well, I think Škoda have done it again. They've taken a cost-effective platform, but have now provided a package which is a lot more reliable, a lot more practical, and a lot more spacious as well. The only drawback, according to me, is that it just doesn't feel that sporty to drive, and that's mostly in part to the steering. But the truth is, if you're not after a car which is, you know, very sporty to drive, then that matters not at all. The truth is, even though Skoda has come late to the MQB A0 party, 
they've brought with it a lot of improvements, including the technology. So you now get the updated next-gen infotainment system, which has the floating screen and the digital cockpit, and you can have the maps on both screens, which we don't even see in the T-Rock. So it pays to be a little bit more patient, doesn't it? Overall, I think it's a great car. For somebody who doesn't want the size of an Octavia, but still wants something a little bit more practical than the Golf, but with a little bit more of a price advantage. So, what do you guys think? Do you like this car? Will this be the next family car that you pay for? Let me know and put it down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.